In all things, there is a natural law of cycles. And today I'd love to share with you an inconvenient truth, but a truth that if you recognize this, this will change your love life. This will change the relationships that you have, not just loving and affectionate relationships, but relationships you have with people at work, people in the office. Maybe you're already in a relationship, but it's less than perfect. I'd love to teach you something today that you can begin to apply to your life, and this will change your history forever. We are starting right now. So come on. Let's kick on into it. Hello gorgeous, welcome to Elevate. My name is Ben, thank you for your company. You know, it's such a blessing to spend this time with you every day. And I am here every day, so make sure that you are subscribed. Make sure that you browse the channel and have a look. There's nearly a thousand videos on here now that I've done. So I know you'll find something that helps move you forward. But can I encourage you today, if there is brokenness somewhere on the inside of you, if there is some brokenness there, it doesn't just have to be the brokenness that we experience at the hands of failed relationships. It can be brokenness through something that's happened at work. It can be a fracture in a family dynamic. If there is brokenness on the inside of you, I'd love to tell you some home truths about what's really going on in the cycles of life we find ourselves in and why we keep finding ourselves in these cycles that seem to repeat. Have you noticed in life, cycles seem to repeat. There is a natural law of cycles and it's with everything in life. This is why so often on the channel I always encourage people just keep moving forward. Because even if you don't know where you're going, even if you're carrying some brokenness with you, if you are moving, then you're moving. It's when we become stagnant that the wheels fall off. And for so many of us, we walk around our life harboring hurt and heartache. And we never really actually process it. We never really actually get through it. We just shove it into the closet and then shove more of it into the closet and shove more of it into the closet. And then when someone says, What's that weird noise I can hear every time I'm with you? We know it's those skeletons rattling around in the closet. But we don't do anything about it. And we don't do anything about it because we don't know what to do about it. We live in a world that demonstrates the example to us that brokenness begets brokenness. We live in a world that demonstrates an example to us that if you're not in a relationship, you are less than enough. If you are not in a relationship, even if you feel good about it, one day you'll wake up and you'll be all alone and you'll, and, the, and we get into relationships because they're familiar. But we don't heal from the brokenness of the last one, so we carry that with us. And here's the truth, ladies and gentlemen. And sometimes the truth is hard. But if you truly want to move forward, because the person of your dreams... They're out there praying for you, just like you're praying for them. They're hoping and believing for you, just like you are for them. They're going through some nonsense. They're going through some pain and some difficulty and they're processing it and they are figuring that out, just like you were doing for them. Who is meant for you will always come to find you if you keep moving forward. But here's the deal. The inconvenient truth of relationships and love is that you are destined to live in a repeating cycle with whoever comes in to fill the relationship void in your life until you heal. You should not be getting into relationships when you should be healing. Now understand my heart, I love you. I'm so thankful for you and believe me when I tell you I know what it's like to go to bed every night and have nothing to cuddle except a pillow. I know, I'm a bachelor. I got divorced almost a decade ago now, and I've been alone pretty much ever since. And what's really perplexing is that in my high school days, I was the guy that just always had to have a girlfriend. I always had to have a girlfriend. I dreamed of leaving school, having a career, getting married, having a family. It 
it was just, it, it was such a dream and it was so important. And I'd go from one girlfriend to the next and we'd be together for six months, then we'd break up, then I'd be with someone for three months, then we'd break up, then I'd be with someone for whatever and we'd break up. And we didn't break up over huge fights and arguments. You know what it's like in high school. But what we fail to realise is that we shouldn't be dating while we should be healing. When I was first divorced, the first year and a half was probably the more two was probably the most lonely. I longed for companionship because all of my life I was terrified of abandonment and all I wanted was someone to wrap their arms around me. All I wanted was to be fully known by another and to fully know them. To live in a safe little universe where our worlds revolve around each other and everything else can get stuffed. So those first couple of years were super hard but I made an intentional decision that I was taking myself out of life because I began to recognize there are too many skeletons in the closet. And if I have someone come into my life now, all the rattling is just gonna scare them away. Now we've all got baggage. No one needs to be perfect going into a relationship, but you need to know what's in your closet. You need to know what's inside of your suitcase so that it doesn't spring out and sabotage this beautiful new relationship days, weeks, months or years down the track. You should not be dating when you should be healing. In all things there is a natural cycle and your cycles will continue until you transcend them. Your cycles will continue until you transcend them. You transcend a cycle that has you pinned to a current version of reality when you want to move forward from it. You change that cycle by moving forward and learning and being introspective and healing. You be kind to yourself. You allow yourself to make the mistakes. You allow yourself to have said the things you wish you didn't say. And you be okay with that. Because if you can learn from that now and apply that learning, if you can take something out of your closet now and make it give you profit in your next relationship, then all of a sudden, like the scripture declares, that which the enemy meant for your harm, God will turn around and use for your good. What you thought was going to break you was actually your greatest setup. It didn't happen to you, it happened for you. And if you can get in alignment with this, you can move forward and live in that blessed relationship. But in all things, there is a natural cycle. And your cycles will always continue until you transcend them. Heal. Be kind to yourself. Be gentle with yourself. Don't be afraid to be alone with your thoughts. You know, I remember probably five years ago now, a friend of mine tried to set me up with a friend of hers. I mean, this has happened many times. I've had lots of people say, oh, you know, my mate Ben, he's like, he's this incredible guy. Oh, you've got to meet him. And everyone tries to set me up. People try and set me up with people my age or people older than me and people younger than me. And they always try and figure out, well, what is it that he's looking for? And I keep saying to them, look, I, I love you. That, like, thank you for trying to help me, but I'm good. It's not that she's up too old. It's not that she's too young. I'm just good. I'm just here floating on my cloud. I mean, yeah, I would love someone to cuddle every night. I'm super affectionate. I'm a lover, not a fighter. So I'd love someone to cuddle every night. I'd love someone to whisper sweet nothings into my ear and me do the same and all those romantic, lovely things. And do you know what? One day it will probably happen. One day the universe will probably bring someone into my life that will knock me off my feet. And when that happens, I'm open to it. But it's got to be God. It has to be the universe, not me. I've worked way too hard for the life that I have to allow the energy of another to come in and start meddling with my peace. But I know that if I don't go and try and orchestrate it, if I just leave it up to the universe, then who is meant for me will always come to be with me. If I focus on my inner work, if I focus on being my best, living my best life, coming up higher, being kind and gentle with myself, encouraging myself, serving my purpose and my destiny. If I just focus on that, if I'm faithful with all of those little things, if I'm diligent with all those small things, 
The big things will always look after themselves. I tell you this all the time. Now you see, I live what I preach you. Everything that I share with you guys, everything that I share with you, even the things that are difficult, even the things that hurt a little bit, that sword has sliced me first. These are all things that I've dealt with and I've struggled with. People say to me, Ben, how do you have so much introspection about the journey and how things work and, the, and, and mental faculties and coming up higher and positivity? Folks, it's, be, it's because I've been at the polar end of that. You've heard me talk about the law of polarity, how you experience the opposite end of the continuum of what you actually want on your way to what you desire. I've, <laughs> pardon me, I've been all the way down there. I've experienced it all. I've had the hurt, the heartache, the brokenness, the pain, the sleepless nights, the years of hurt and pain. I've had it all. And I've decided that that is now my servant. I've decided it's time to make all of that pay. And you make it pay by using it as your foundation. And I use it to help you. I make it pay to help you. And I hope... I hope, I hope that this hasn't stung you. I know it's hard hearing people say, stop running from relationship to relationship. Find it within yourself first. I know it's hard to hear that when all you really want to do is cuddle someone. I know. Believe me when I tell you just how worth it this journey of self-development is. Because what you're doing is learning about yourself. If knowledge is power the knowledge of self is self-empowerment. I had this friend, that's, man, I go down rabbit holes, sorry for the rambling on. I had this friend, this is what I was talking about, about five years ago, she tried to set me up with one of her friends, and like I said, this happens, it happens quite often. It's lovely and it's sweet and whatever. And anyway, so I met this friend, and I said, look, I'm not interested in a relationship, but I'm happy to go out and have dinner, and I'll, I'll pay, and we'll have a couple of drinks, it'll be great, we'll have a good, it'll be lovely, it'll be really nice, let's do that. So we go into that, have a great time. And I see my friend a couple of weeks later and she's like, oh my God, my friend's so into you. And I'm like, oh, that's awesome. Isn't that funny? If I was in high school, I'd be like, it's on, let's go into that relationship. And I was like, cool, that's awesome. Yeah, she's lovely. Thanks for the setup. Like, that was great. And she's like, well, like, what are you going to do about it? I said, nothing. She said, don't you like her? I said, yeah, she's great. We had a great time. And I told her that I wasn't looking for a relationship, but I'm happy to have a, go out, have a meal, have a drink, see a movie, hang out, whatever it might be. And I said, I told her that. And I told her that if she's looking for a relationship and that sort of thing will be difficult for her because she might always be wanting more, I'm okay with that. Let's just not see each other. But if she's okay with that boundary, then I'm cool hanging out with her. And my friend said to me, oh, Ben, it just breaks my heart. She said, you're such a sweet and loving guy. You deserve someone like her in your life. One day you will wake up lonely and regret the decisions you've made. And I said to my friend, look, I get it. I understand what you're telling me. And all I can tell you is this. If that day comes where I wake up lonely and regret it, if that day comes, that's the day I'll address it. But right now, what I have to do, my mandate for now is to follow my path of peace. That's what I'm doing. Can I encourage you to do the same? Who and what is meant for you will always come to be with you, but you have to be full to overflowing first. You cannot pour from an empty cup. Relationships shouldn't be where you take from each other and I need this and you need that. Do you know the amount of counseling sessions I've sat in with people? And a decade's worth of problems in this relationship stem down to he's not doing this and she's not doing that. And he won't give me this and she won't give me that. That's not what relationships are for. Relationships exist so that we can water each other's garden, so that we can grow together. No one takes from one another. We just grow together and move through life together. It's uplifting. It's an upward spiral, not downwards. If you want to live in a relationship like that, and if you're in one right now that doesn't look like that, the good news is, and I've seen this more times than I could even tell you is true, the good news is your, your, your relationship can recover. You can get on the right track. You can set the tone. You are the first link in a new chain. You are the lion in the sand. You can encourage and invite better days, and you can set the tone. 
But if you're not in a relationship, focus on you. Focus on your healing. Focus on being filled with your own love so you can pour that out into somebody else when they finally come across your path. Folks, I love you. I've prattled on for way too long today, but I just wanted to share my heart with you. So many people, they seem to be in this zone in life where they have to have company. I get it. Dare to step out into the unfamiliar. Your destiny is there. It's not in the familiar. It's in the unknown. Dare to step out into the unknown and there you will meet your every dream. I love you. Make sure you subscribe. Go and check these two videos out and I will see you tomorrow.